everybody and welcome once again to Danny and Sons Real Tech Mod Pack. This episode we're going to have a look at the logistics part of um, pneumatic craft repressurized. Uh, so let's start with doing that shall we. I'm also going to have a look at um, the refinery. I've actually built the refinery. You can't see it. It's just behind that pillar. Anyway we'll get on. So the first things we need to do the logistics part are some senders and receivers. So here we've got an active provider frame. Um, the recipe for that is basically four purple plastic, no, eight purple plastic in a, in a chest formation, like that. And that makes four of these things. Uh, and that will actually send items to a receiver. And I think, actually, let's go back and have a look at the receiver here. Request a farm frame. And this is this one. And that's actually just eight plastic, blue plastic, in a um, chest formation again. So that gives us these. And then to actually connect these things together, what we need are these logistic modules. Now these are fairly expensive, well, fairly because everything in this mod is actually quite expensive in terms of iron. So for that we need um, four black plastic, four compressed iron and one of these regulator tubes. The regulator tubes are two safety tube modules with a pressure tube in the middle of it. Um, and those of course are then one pressure tube plus one pressure gauge plus two levers and the pressure gauge is that so there's a few bits and pieces to make in order to make one of these regulator modules like this and then you need to actually configure everything you need this logistics configurer configurator let's have a look at the recipe for that it's not too difficult it's basically it's for it's actually fairly cheap isn't it you've got the air canister i think we had the air canister in the, in the wrench as well um so four compressed iron one red flower dye and it will die of some description lever and this one and this one is basically another pressure tube plus some more compressed iron and two redstone it's not too difficult and then what we do is we charge it up and we can actually charge it up on this you'll see i've actually changed this a little bit the configuration of this a little bit um i put in a dispensing upgrade in here and it's got a reasonable amount of bar now because we've created all this. And what that dispensing upgrade means is when I'm standing on it like this, you'll see that this is actually starting to charge up. This one will be as well. So there's both of these are charging up when you're actually standing on them. Of course, the other way to do it is to simply right click the things and uh, like that and then put it into there as well. So you could put that one into there and that's going to get the bar up pressure as well. So they're both filling up and reducing the pressure in here. So we've now got a warning, which basically means it's full. And actually that should, if I'm not mistaken, give an output signal when it's charged up. So yes, you see, I've got uh, emit redstone when done discharging. And so well, you can see that better here. So now it's emitting the, so it's now it fully, both of these are fully charged and you can see here it's got the redstone signal. So it's turned that on. And then you can configure that here. And that's fairly straightforward to configure. So now let's go and build some more of these um, logistics units i've got actually i've got one already set up but i'm going to make another three we're going to make those for the refinery we'll also have a look at the refinery because the refinery is just another way of getting refining oil so what i would like to do is make some more of these so the recipe for that is as we've done discussed already and i've got a three already prepared in here so i can make four of these things i've got pressure tubes like this that's no problem and we're also going to have a look at the refinery um i think the refinery i've already built four of these components so we don't need to do build any more so it's six not too expensive it's up and six compressed one diamond and um compressed iron and two pieces of glass of any color so they're not too bad so when, by the time you've done four of those it's still not anywhere near as expensive as uh, immersive petroleum refinery or the um, magnetic craft refineries and I've done some work with those as well as we shall have a look at now I've removed one of the refineries here the one that was producing plastic and instead of that I put in here a fluid tank from immersive engineering and that's actually get collecting oil so now what I want to do is I want to send oil over here to this um, refinery here and what I've got is I've set up a whole load of tubes. You can see I've got this um, this logic, whatever it's called, I've got quite forgotten, log logistics module here in my hand. So what I do, you want to do is you want to click this onto this like this. So we have to go across here. Uh, you'll see I've got a big hole. The reason I've got a big hole is because 
<laughs> I want to uh, show you what I've been doing. So we can click this onto here like this. Right click it. I think that might be in the right position. Yes, it is. And then we want to receive onto this one. So we put a requesting frame on here. There's two more different types of frames as well. We can actually put it in the, intermediately into a storage like that. Now this requires pressure. So this is why I haven't closed this up. You'll see the tube goes down through here and it also comes along here. What I want to do is I want to link this into here like this. So um, I think we can link it down here. So I should have some pressure tubes with me and I'll just I'll just knock away the use the use the pickaxe and just knock these away, just go down here like this. Oh, it's a bit slow, wrong one, that's why. <laughs> Let's just break these off. I've actually got some long range um gosh, I can't stand in the right place. I've got some long range um on my hair I've got this on my chest plate I've got the long so but it's called, I've forgotten what it's called already. Um should tell me if I press shift Re dis reach distance that's one of those add-ons in that so it makes it life a bit easier for especially for this type of stuff so now we'll just put down some more of these tubes here link them together I think 11 is going to be more than enough like that and then this links into this network here so as when we've got this might already have pressure in it yes it has got pressure in it good uh, so we can just jump over here hopefully <laughs> so these can then start to work you'll see this will then go green when it's got at least five three bar and at the moment these are red so let's go to the other end of where I want to put this and I want to put this on the oil over here and this is where I've actually set everything else up on the other side here so I've already got this logistics module in here on channel black actually I'm not sure how to change the channel as it happens Maybe we have to use the pneumatic configurer for doing that. So I'll have that in our hand. So this time we're going to do the active provider frame. So we're going to put an active provider frame on this uh, valve from simple fluid tanks like this. And that's then going to provide when it's got enough bar. Hopefully it will get enough bars. It's quite a long way. And, I, and one thing I haven't investigated yet is what distance does to pressure tubes. So let's, while that's while that's getting prepared, let's go and have a look over here. And now, so this will automatically start to get oil into it in here. And I've put a little bit of oil in it already. Let's just move this out of the way. So what does it tell us here? This item is used to configure logistic frames and transferring gadgets. Shift right click to remove the frames and other attachments. So if you just right click it on here. Actually, you have to right click it on, on the frame itself. Nope, didn't work. Try that. Uh, try that again with in my hand. So then we have this this um, GUI. So this is basically slot interaction. So we can add into here fluids. I don't think we need to do this yet, as it happens, because I think because it's only got one fluid going being sent out, and it should only then receive one fluid. But I'm not 100% sure about this. So let's uh, come in here and click this. So what we do is we put oil in here. And I was trying to do this with other fluids because if you look here at the information, it says a refiner is used to f process the fluid into different fluids, for example, diesel, kerosene, and gasoline. Uh, uh, an LPG can be processed from oil. Now, I was expecting to be able to put diesel in it and be able to process other stuff, but you can't. And you can have two to four uh, refineries stacked on, on top of each other. So hopefully we'll get some oil in here in a while. So that's now green, as you can see. And the pressure's going up here. It's 3.2 bar. So on the other side, hopefully we should see that in a second. This should also be increasing. At the moment, it's 2.81 bar. So when this starts, when, I hope, this is the question, when this is actually up to 3 bar, it might start to provide fluid. No, I've not tried this yet, as it happens. We'll see, soon see, because it's nearly there. But we'll wait for a few seconds, and I'll wait, come back when it's ready. So now you see its state is online, and its colour is black, and it's off. I wonder if we can right-click this with the... on the thing here to change the colour. I'm not sure how we change the colour. If I press Shift and click it, it will take it away. So anyway, we're online, and it's black. So therefore, this should be pumping fluid out, I hope. 
If not, I'll have to put a filter on it. So with a bit of luck, we should see in the refinery here some oil. So it's not yet coming in. So let's then get a bucket of oil out of the system and, and then configure that. But you don't need to use a bucket of oil. You can actually do it from the GUI. So we'll do that as it happens and I'll try that. So on the frame here, right click down the image. Oops, I actually didn't mean to do that. Ah, so fluids is set up to kerosene. And I don't want that. And that's probably why it's not working. I want this fluid here to be oil. So we've got different types of oil. This is the one I think we want, just oil itself. So we can select that one. And that's all you have to do. And then it's filtered in this one. So hopefully with a bit of luck, we're now going to get oil being processed into here. And as you can see, it's doing... Oh, that's me getting cold. Has it went already? So you can see this is maybe pumping out now. Let's have a look. Sorry, I'm having to run around again. But I did put some redstone on my uh, armour so I can go a little bit faster. But not a huge amount faster. Oops, I'm also going very, very fast. So let's just right-click this. I'm still not getting anything into it. So maybe you have to reconfigure the, to configure this frame as well. Let's try that. Wrong one. Try again. So it's got nothing in it at the moment. Let's try oil again. And see if that starts to feed stuff into it. It should do. As long as I've got everything right. Yes, now we're actually getting oil in here. So it's going to give us a bucket of oil each time. So now maybe we want more than one bucket of oil. So this should then process. So how do we get more than one bucket of oil? We have to come back to this frame again here. Uh, and it says, if you look at the information, that you can specify request stuff. Oh, hold on, I think. So we can search, we've done that already. And I think it tells me here we can press, oh yes, that's right. So we can double the ingredients. So we can add by right-clicking one and subtract by left-clicking one. Something's actually still going up. So the pressure must be, strangely enough, above the level here for some reason or other. Have I got this off? It should turn itself off. Why is it not doing? What have I done wrong? <laughs> I have to check this. I also figured out, so that's set for low, I think. Yep. And this one should also be set for low. And this one should also be set for low. Low. So this should be turned off. Ah, probably because these two are still burning out the last bit of fuel. So let's try getting back onto this thing again. So it says, oh, missed it, didn't I? I want to get the frame. Why didn't that? All right, okay. So we can right click this. Ah, two buckets, three buckets, four buckets. So what did we can fill into this thing? I can't remember. Let's have a look. It's, it's losing, it's going blue and green. So maybe that means it's actually powering it up. Let's have a look at this thing. So we've got nine buckets from 1600. So we can make the 16 buckets on this. So let's do that. So we keep right clicking this until we get to 16. So that then should be full, filled up and shouldn't give any more fluid than that. You can see it's uh, pumping. I think the blue is when it's pumping. So red's when it's offline. And then we've got our 16 buckets in here. Now to actually operate this, you need to heat it. It doesn't need pressure. If you right click this and have a look at this, problems, not enough heat. So you can heat this thing. And what we noticed last time with this flux compressor, if I turn this on now, it's going to start pumping up these, this pressure here, as you, as you can see. So it's going to get up to 20 bars, but it'll also at the same time increase this. I don't want it on. I don't want to go above 20 bars, but let's go around here and have a look at this. We can also connect this into here, and that'll pump that up. So let's have a look at this again. So the temperature is here, so we need more heat than this. So what we can do here. Now, it's just to connect this, and you see I've disconnected it at the moment with the wrench. So let's get the wrench out here. My inventory is a bit on the full side. Ah, oh, strange. Isn't that weird? <laughs> and we right-click this. Then it should connect up, and then it'll give this heat. And as it gives it heat, it'll then start to process the oil. 
I see it's not quite up there yet. It's 91, and I think it needs about 100. And as soon as it gets to 100 degrees, it'll start to... This should go off and become green. I'm not exactly sure what temperature it is. 110. And you can see the oil's actually getting pumped, going in and out now. So now it's green at about 124, wasn't it? So these will start to increase as, you, as we carry on. So we're now getting LPG in here as well. And of course this is then going to reduce the pressure in here quite a lot. It actually goes down quite quickly with this um, uh, with this heater. So we can then turn it on. And what we can then do, of course, one thing I wasn't sure about was how to use the regulator tube. That took me a while. Just let me empty out my inventory a little bit. Um, I'm going to put the, the stone into here. Got two, two slots in here. We'll also talk about the advanced PCB. So what I want to do is to set up a door. <laughs> uh, pneumatic craft have got pneumatic craft doors in here like this. So we can put this door down, but in fact let's put this block down first of all. Like that. Um, and that's the wrong way around. Let's just turn it. It needs to face it so that uh, the hole is where the door is going to be. The door is going to be a bit on the low side because this needs to be at the top of the door. So if I put the door down here, like that, you'll see it's open because I'm near it, because this thing has still got pressure in it from when I was doing some testing. Uh, and it's done by a nearby player. So when I go near this, it'll then op open the door for us. So, But this thing here has got a max pressure of five bar. And here we've got much more than that, so this would blow up. So what we have to do then is to use these safety regulators. So what I was going to do is to attach a pipe here, but I can't do that because I've got to do it this way around. So if I attach a pipe now, I'll tell you what I'll do is right click this like that, block it off, put the pipe down like that, put the regulator onto the pipe. Now I was being, um, I was trying to do it like this. I'll show you what I was trying to do. Probably most people try and do it like this. Think, and it doesn't work. Of course it doesn't work because it's not the way it works. <laughs> so let's just right click this off, shift right click off anyway, and then do that here. Now what you have to do, you have to do it in line as it were, even though it says it's not in line, you do it like this. So this then becomes the low pressure side of this. And then now we can look at this thing here, and then you can give it a redstone signal. So for the redstone signal, we'll come over here and we'll put, what has it gone to? A redstone potentiometer beside this. So you can put a redstone potentiometer on this like this. And then we can give it a power. In fact, that's probably not the way I want to do it. Let's just break that and put it down how I want it. Like this. So then it's going to tell me what this is going to be doing here. So at the moment it's max bar is 20. So we, if we increase this up to about, say, there. Now it should tell me... Ah. Oh, that's right. So now the threshold is 3 bar. So it's got a redstone signal of nine applied so then i can apply a pipe onto this and we know we're not going to blow up the door because it's going to be limited to three bar we haven't connected it in yet but let's just increase this a little bit more because the door only needs two bar to operate i think it says yes just under just over two bar so we'll get this set up to 2.5 bar so at the moment it's three so we just increase this to 10. Okay, like that so if i right click this just above the arrow here go up one so that's now got a value of 10 so this will then have a 2.5 bar so all i need to do now is connect this in like this and this will then start to get pressure up to 2.5 bar and not beyond that so the door will be safe so that's, that's probably pressure is going up here the pressure has gone down a lot because of course this heat has taken it away so now what we can do is we can turn this back on again and you'll see this is flashing blue and green, so it's obviously working quite nicely. So this must be getting quite a lot of... Yeah, you can see it's refining quite nicely. It's getting the few, the oils coming in. The temperature's high, and it's going up because of this. It's also producing a reasonable amount of pressure temperature. Uh, 115 is producing... So the pressure's now at 3.5 bar. So with a bit of luck... We should see this is stuck at 2.5, which is exactly what I wanted it to do. 
Phew. So now I've got a bu extra bucket of oil here. I'm not quite sure where I'm going to put that. <laughs> Let's just see if I could put this somewhere away so I don't need it. Let's have a look on these things. Yeah, these are full up at the moment. So, and I oh maybe I've got space in this tank here to put this. Oops, nope, didn't work. Can I right click the sentence there? Yes, I can. Good. So I can right click it onto the valve, and then this fills it up. So now we've got 168 buckets. So it's used up quite a lot of oil. I also did another test on here after I uh, did it first of all. So the first one we had 10,000. I had 10 million milli buckets, so that's 10,026 buckets. So now we've got uh, 9,095 buckets, so it definitely does use it up. I also did the same thing on the um, silt. I was wondering whether or not that was... I've not going to find it, of course. You'll see I've turned off most of these by breaking them. If you break them, it turns them off, because this thing gets too hot. At the moment, it's 1,000 degrees, and it's going... It's basically going down so I can easily put another one on back on here right, right click that and that'll increase the power of that again that was going to come over here wasn't I so we have a look at this is the new one here it doesn't tell you what how much silt we've got left so we have to break these two like that and then we can move these out of the way so this was the um, one hour 46 minutes ago so that's the new one so we've got 25,655 ores and the original one we had 38,400 ores so it's definitely working and it's actually working as I expected to do so the next time it'll, we can put this down well so I'm just going to fill all of this up I'm still not sure why this is oh of course this one's this one's actually quite slow you see the peat's actually should have been going down i think the one of these has got the speed upgrade this one like this so the temperature is at five bar so the uh, 217 but this has also got five speed upgrades as you remember it was uses quite a lot of power to do this and the doors just opened as we got near it <laughs> let's have a look at this thing so we're going up quite rapidly and it's proportional so one bucket is definitely directly proportional to these. So the next thing I was going to do here is to put some logistic active providers on this one here. And the idea is then we can put take these away. In fact you can actually see it smoking so that's another indication it's actually working. I think I don't to be honest with you I don't know if we have to do more than one whether one is sufficient and we can put it all through oops my mouth's gone fast again i'll come back in a few seconds when it's daytime right so we can connect this up again so let's connect this up with this one actually there's one more thing i want to look at before i forget i can't do it until i put the pipe on that's interesting okay well i'm going to have to put the pipe on it first of all so the first thing we're going to do is to disable this pipe otherwise we lose all the pressure we don't want to do that especially with this long distance so if i right click this one it puts a little stopper on it and then we can put the tube on top of this like this and then it's not going to connect in but then i can come around here and connect this in if i can reach you those so get awkward position there it is good so we can then feed this onto this one like this right click it on see it's coming around here it's actually not there it's just because I've got this in my hand so we can now jump back again so now we can then remove this and it connects up so those are now both powered so we can then send this to somewhere else to another to another tank or ever, wherever we want to with the requester so let's try that I think I've got quite a few tanks around at the moment all of these tanks have got stuff in it for example um, but these three are empty so let's just put one of those down somewhere that we can have some pressure this needs three bar you know I think I'll just increase this to, to more and just use this place here as a uh, I have to go in through the top that's no big deal I can do that no problem so we can then put the receiving here, re requesting frame receiver here like that I'll put this one onto that one and then we come along here and we put the interface onto this Oops, 
crystal freezer. Doesn't like that, I no. You have to actually do it from the face you want to do it on, like that. Good. So now we can right click this one and configure this one. So, for example, if we only want to see kerosene, it didn't work well because I didn't hit the right bit, did I? So let's do that. Let's just put kerosene in here. Okay, so this tank is only going to receive kerosene. In fact, I've done this wrong. I've got to remove this one, haven't I? So let's shift right click this off. Try that again. And put this time, put it on the top side, on the top face. But of course, I've got to bring the pipes up first of all. Haha. <laughs> okay, right. Right click this. Put the pipes into place. I need one here. And one here. That will then connect into that, no problem. We need to come down here and put one on this face if it's possible. A bit awkward as it happens. Fortunately, I've got a hole here. Uh, if I can step back enough, I can't. So hold down, shift, and go back. No, I can't reach it. I have to break another, another space backwards. Now I can reach it like that. So that's now in the right place. I did do that correctly, didn't I? Because it, it needs reconfiguring again. So, oh no, this is the one that's configured, so that's fine. So I'll just remove this and it should then link in. And it won't have enough pressure yet because it's going to be 2.5 bar, isn't it? So let's then drop this by 2. So go just underneath the arrow here and right click this twice. So now, now that's green. So that's now going to receive kerosene in here. Obviously, it's got nothing in it at the moment, so let's just move this out of the way. It's still empty because we haven't told the other side to send the stuff out. So we need to tell you what we're going to send out of here. So this, we've got these four materials. So let's have a look at that one first of all. Right click this with the configurator. So that's it, we've already got kerosene being provided. That's interesting. So the next one, and maybe because I did this before, let's click the next one and put in lubricant. Click that one. And then we can have in here diesel. Now we've got a biodiesel. Yeah, biodiesel is fine. We'll do this one. But it's not biodiesel because that's what we're making for the plant. And then well, the last one was gasoline, wasn't it? I think gasoline, but it was one type of gasoline. Let's just double check this. So it's the orange gasoline <laughs> as opposed to the dark gasoline. So let's have a look at that one. Do that one as well. It's also called fuel, this one. Um, that slot there. So it's this one. You see we've got actually natural gas, wood gas. There's, that's from forestry, I think. Uh, natural gas is from magnetic craft. Gasoline is from immersive petroleum. And this one is from magnetic craft. It's the one we actually want. So let's put that into there. So they're getting provided now. So this should have one bucket of Nope, hasn't got anything in yet. But I'm expecting it to have one bucket of kerosene in there. So I don't think I need to do anything else with this stuff. I'll check it. So it's got kerosene, lubricant, diesel and gasoline. And that's what... Oh! Yes, that's right. There's providing fluids. We can also do this with items, of course. No, I say of course. Maybe you don't know that already, but you can do this with items. So this one should be working, and it's not. We can increase this up anyway. We can increase this up to five buckets. And I think this is how it works. I've never tried it, so let's have a look. Oh, but it's still empty. <laughs> oh, well, it's not working as I expected it to. Of course it's not working as I expected it to. Because these are different networks, aren't they? This is not actually connected to this network. It needs, so I need to connect this across for that to work. Well, I'll do that, and we'll do, look at that next time, I think. Because it's quite a bit of work to take the pipes, and I need to make some more pipes. No, I'll tell you what, I'll do that now, and I'll come back in a few minutes. Well, nearly done. Let's put some more pipe down here. I've got three more to put down. I've basically connected it across here, and it's going underneath the ground, connecting up to this one here. So then it should work. So let's just see if that will work. Um, I'm just being careful, because I blocked that one off. So I can then connect the pipe through here like this. Okay, and hopefully I can still reach that connection. Yes, I can. Good. 
And so I'll be able to right click that like that. Can't reach it. Maybe it's not quite right. No. <laughs> Go down the block here. There we go. Just have to get it at the right angle. So that now should get enough pressure in here to actually start. You saw it go blue then, so that means it's definitely getting fuel into here. Let's have a look at that. Five buckets of kerosene, which is basically what we set on the field here. Let's have a look at that again. Configurator. Five buckets. So this one takes uh, 12 buckets, so we can now double click this one. So if it tells me what we can do on this one, so to double it, we sh shift right click. That'll give me 10 buckets. So if we look on here now, we've got 10 buckets of kerosene in here, and it can take 12. So let's just fix that and make it a complete canister of this, like that. So it's now got 12 buckets in there. Fantastic. That's how it works. The reason I did the door was basically just to provide a, a means of showing you that you can actually control the pressure. So I can take this back down again to two and a half bar at the moment. It's set to three and a half bar, I think. It is. So we go up to. That should now be down to two and a half bar. Now there is something else you can do. We've got these safety tubes. I can put the safety tube on here with the, with the pressure on it. Um, I'm going to do it over here. Because actually I'm expecting this one. Oh, actually we've only got 2.5 bar. Because we've got no power in here. Yeah, fine, good. Now if we apply onto this thing, you right click it with a, an advanced PCB. So the advanced PCB, let's have a look at the recipe for that. It's just a standard printed PCB with some yellow plastic and some redstone around it. And you get these advanced ones. The reason you've got two recipes is you can put the bits in the corners. With, or in the middle so it's flexible and you do right click this and then it goes green and you can do that on this module as well for the um, for the regulator so on this one here we can then right click it because so now we can say what the threshold is so we can go much more above that so we can say the threshold of the say is 20 bar and that's and that's it and then it'll it'll release pressure at 20 bar. So if I, for example, at the moment we've got 1.8 bar, let's go and change this down to one bar, or maybe 1.5 bar would be a good amount, and it should start to release the pressure, which it does. So you don't need to apply a redstone signal to this. So obviously these machines have got a max pressure on here. So the max pressure is 20 bar. So I wonder what I'm going to do to this one is I'm going to say 19.5 uh, 19 bar. And then save that. It also has this advanced configuration. You see a little box here, advanced configuration. So you can then configure it with redstone. I haven't tried this yet. It's slightly confusing. So you basically then will keep between 19.5 and 19.6 bar, which is fine. That will do fine. I think it doesn't tell us that much. So you can define exactly the behavior of the module depending on the redstone signal you can define a formula well i don't really want to do that yet because it's just adequate for all the needs i can think of so this is turned on it's not going to overheat we're not going to get any problems this is the regulator here and so on and so forth now i said you can also do this with items but there is a cheaper one so get that out of here first of all um, it's this, the transfer gadget. Now let's have a look at the recipe for the, the transfer gadget. It's just a hopper and a compressed iron. It is fairly cheap, six pieces of iron. So what you can do with this is you can then put this between two chests. So for example, let's have a look. In this one we've got a little bit of space, not too much. Let's just put it like this. So we've got four slots of space here. So you can then take the transfer gadget and right click the, fate, the interface between the two and you've got then a blue and a red side orange side so on the configurator here you can then right click this and swap it over so this then becomes the input and the output so then I should be able to can I shift right click it no you can't it just basically pushes the items so it's not filtered in any way so if I right click that now you'll see the stuff's coming in 
very slowly but it is coming in from this chest like that so it's an early form of automation shift right click it you remove it like that bit of lag when I did that but there was nothing else and I can put the dirt in here again I'll fill the I'll fill everything up between episodes I think there is one tip I got from the developer or the, his contributor and you can actually put onto this um, and he says it's a good idea put something on it I'm good you can use trapdoors whatever you can use your own bits and chisel and bits constructions you can put it on oops didn't mean to do that because I just knocked off this and I don't have my suit on so I'm not going to apply that at the moment because it'll have power and give me a shot but if you cover those faces up here with something or other it will prevent the heat loss or it will slow the heat loss down so as you notice it was fairly quickly getting cooled from the um, items here let's have a look I should be able to right click this the temperature goes down quite quickly but at the moment of course it's got actually it's got no power in it still because we've, we've run out of power but we can then slow that process down by covering the sides and the same goes for these pneumatic um you can't see it even for these uh thermo pneumatic processing plants you cover up the faces and they don't cool down so quickly so that was a tip so that's it for this episode next episode we shall be carrying on with um pneumatic craft repressurized I'd probably start doing some work with some drones. So until then, bye for now.